like many eukaryotes each yeast chromosome has multiple replication origins each yeast replication origin contains an 11 base pair conserved core sequence during g2 and m phase of cell cycle a hexameric protein called ORC or origin recognition complex binds to the 11 base pair conserved core sequence in the each replication origin of yeast. During yearly G1 phase, unphosphorylated replication initiation factors like CDC6 and CDT1 associate with the ORC. The resulting protein complex assembles MCM ring complexes on the adjacent DNA. The MCM has six subunits like MCM2, MCM3, MCM4, MCM5, MCM6 and MCM7. The assembly of MCM ring complexes generates a pre-replication complex or pre-RC. In the S phase, S phase cyclin CDK and DDK phosphorylates the components of pre-replication complex like CDC6, CDT1, NCM227. This phosphorylation leads to the binding of CDC45. This phosphorylation also leads to the activation of NCM helicases. The activated NCM helicases unwind the parental DNA strands. As a result, single stranded DNAs are formed. The phosphorylation of pre replication complex also leads to the release of phosphorylated CDC6, phosphorylated CDT1, and unphosphorylated ORC. Another protein called as RPA then binds to the single stranded DNAs. In the next step, DNA polymerase alpha primase uses DNTPS and NTPS and initiates DNA synthesis. In the next step, other components necessary for replication fork movement like RFC, PCNA, pole delta and DNTPS, NTPS, ORCS are recruited. After the recruitment of RFC, PCNA, pole delta, the site of DNA replication will look like this. These are the origins of replication. At each replication fork, bidirectional synthesis away from the replication origin continues. As a result, the daughter double-stranded DNAs are formed. ORCS bind to the origin sequence in the each daughter double-stranded DNA. But the phosphorylated initiation factors like CDC6 and CDT1 cannot assemble a pre-initiation complex on the ORC. b type cyclin CDK complexes maintain the initiation factors like CDC6, CDT1, NCM227 in a phosphorylated state throughout the remainder of S, G2 and yearly anaphage. In the late anaphage, CDC14 phosphatase causes dephosphorylation of phosphorylated initiation factors. Also in the late anaphage, B-type cyclins undergo polyubiquitination in presence of APC or C. After this polyubiquitination, B-type cyclins 
are degraded. After the occurrence of these above said events, the dephosphorylated initiation factors can assemble into new pre-replication complexes. Please like, subscribe and share.